So when will AI replace programmers? If I had to put a specific date on it, I'd say we'd start to see programmers losing their jobs on February. What's up everyone, it's Cody, back again with another video. This time I'm here to answer the question, when will AI replace programmers? GitHub recently released a new productivity tool for programmers called GitHub Copilot, which is currently in limited beta. I was fortunate enough to get into this early beta and have been testing it out for a few weeks now. I've already published my first impressions on this channel, and now I want to explore the topic of AI programming at a broader level. The concept of AI autocompletion is nothing new. I'm writing the script for this video using Grammarly, which provides me with real-time feedback on my grammar and spelling. Tab 9 and Kite have been offering code autocompletion powered by AI for years now. However, this is the first time that we've seen GPT-3 in action when it comes to programming. Why is there so much hype around AI programming? To understand why there is so much hype around AI programming, we have to go back to 1984 when The Terminator saw its theatrical debut. In this movie, a revolutionary artificial intelligence system that is portrayed as Skynet becomes self-aware, leading to a nuclear war against humans that almost ended humanity. For some, artificial intelligence gaining the ability to program is a critical step that will eventually lead to a doomsday scenario through rapid self-improvement cycles. How good are computers at writing code today? So just how good are computers at writing code today? Looking at GitHub Copilot, I've been pleasantly surprised by some of the suggestions I've received and disappointed by others. The tool excels in creating complex SQL statements. For example, I can tell it to create a table of students, courses, instructors, and enrollments. I can then ask Copilot to query across those newly created tables to figure out which students are in a particular course taught by an instructor. Another impressive advancement with AI-powered programming is its ability to understand the context of a particular file to offer up more specific suggestions. One example of this is if I'm working with a JavaScript file that is already using Axios, if Copilot picks up that I need to make a network request, it will use Axios. On the other hand, if I'm working with a file without importing any networking libraries, I won't receive any suggestions related to network requests. GitHub Copilot really starts to stumble when working in a language that it has been trained on more sparsely. For example, when I tried working with Kotlin, the suggestions were downright laughable. It would provide recommendations in Java until I provided an example of what Kotlin's syntax looked like. After that, I would receive some code snippets in Kotlin, but I also notice suggestions for other languages similar to it, such as Swift. I don't want to downplay how awesome Copilot is. After all, only a few weeks ago, the only code suggestions I received were from static analysis tools. Today, I can get some context-aware code suggestions that can be really accurate if the machine learning model has worked with enough data. However, we're at least three or four years away from never needing Google or Stack Overflow to program effectively. What challenges need to be overcome before computer coders can replace human coders? Even though Copilot picks up on context clues, there are many challenges that computer coders need to overcome before they can replace their human counterparts. The first challenge that computers will face is testing their own work which may seem simple until you start thinking about it more in depth. The first example I wanna talk about is math. Of course, math is something computers are good at, but how exactly could a computer know its implementation is correct? For example, if we gave a computer two plus two, how would it know that the correct answer is four? Would it add the numbers together using a different math function? If it did that, how would it know that the function it's using to generate the answer for its function is correct? Furthermore, if it already has that function that does what it needs to do, why is it reinventing the wheel? The answer for this is quite simple, but implementing the solution will be complicated. Before a computer can test its own work, it needs to gain the ability to reason. Having the ability to reason is also the second challenge that a computer will face if it wants to replace human coders. Deep learning, which attempts to recreate the human brain, is currently the best path forward for this. Unfortunately, we don't have nearly enough time to talk about deep learning in depth. That could be its own video or even an entire YouTube channel, but let me give a brief overview. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which in turn is a subset of artificial intelligence. For example, with machine learning, if we wanted a computer to recognize a person's face, we'd need to train it to identify key characteristics such as the person's eyes, nose, and mouth. On the other hand, deep learning would take many pictures of faces, extract patterns from those faces on its own, and teach itself how to best identify a face. We are already using deep learning today for various applications from self-driving cars to cancer diagnostics. There is a good chance that a deep learning model could be used to replace human coders with computers. Essentially, the computer would need to take input from a non-technical person and translate that into detailed technical requirements. From those requirements, it could then write the code to solve the problem. Providing the computer knows how to reason, it could then test its implementation against those requirements. A computer that can reason may also know when it's time to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. 
which reminds me, please be sure to do that if you haven't done so already. The third thing that a computer would need to do is deploy its code and monitor it to make adjustments if issues are found in production. Assuming we are at the point where a computer can do everything besides deploying its own code, this would likely be a trivial task. Deploying code is already easy to automate. For example, GitHub could simply use all of the GitHub actions at its disposal as training data for deploying different types of applications. Side note, if you aren't familiar with GitHub Actions, check out this video I recently created to learn more about it. As for the monitoring piece, the data from the deployed applications could be fed directly back into the model so it can identify bugs in production and resolve them. Each bug it finds and fixes would help to make it a better programmer. Today, we have most of the tools at our disposal for creating a computer that can build its own applications. Once we have a deep learning model that can reason like a programmer, it will only be a matter of connecting a few dots before it can code entire features independently. It is hard to give a precise estimate, but I'd say we're at least a decade away from computers being able to reason like humans. When should software engineers start worrying about their jobs? Okay, so when will AI replace programmers? If I had to put a specific date on it, I'd say we'd start to see programmers losing their jobs on February 31st, 2033. Okay, so jokes aside, sometime within the next 10 to 15 years, we will live in a world where a computer can be given a user story with a list of requirements and be able to come up with a solution. That solution will likely need to be validated by a human before shipping the feature, then, several years after that, it would probably have enough data to give a good gut check as to whether or not code is ready to be delivered. So I'll go ahead and cushion my estimate a bit and say that by 2040, computers will be doing the bulk of our work as programmers. When you think about all of the big problems we're facing in the world today, that's probably a good thing. Imagine a world where more people could focus on solving problems like global warming, or becoming a galactic civilization instead of getting 1% more engagement with a social media post. Anyway, until then, I'll still focus on getting at least 1% of my viewers to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so they can be notified each and every time I upload a new video like this one. We also have an excellent Discord community to talk about everything related to software engineering. And that's it. That's the video.